Anybody re happen to remember what the last problem was that we did yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what shape was it? An ellipse. So, remember that oval-like thing we talked about yesterday? And most of it was pretty darn easy. That whole focus thing is a little bit confusing. But let's do a couple more examples, and I think you'll have that figured out. The ellipse is pretty easy. The ellipse is pretty easy. So let's look at question B. We're on page 55. B. And it looks like this. Now this is a little more complicated than the one we did yesterday. But I bet, I bet you can figure this out. If I said to you, where is the center? One negative two. If you say one negative two, you are exactly right. So our center is one negative two. is going to build out from the center. Now, anybody remember what this 16 does for me? Okay, actually not this time. But it does have to do with 4. This is like my radius in the x direction. So I'm going to start at my center, Olivia, and I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4. And one, two, three, four. Now, this is where graph paper can really come in handy. So, all, every time we do one of these for a grade, we'll be doing it on graph paper. Here, up and down top. Okay, but wait, I need to I need to know these points. So, if I if I start at one over one and I go four, this is going to be five negative two, isn't it? And this one's going to be negative 3, negative 2. Yep. Remember, you're starting at 1, where x is 1. And you're going 4 each way. Now, I'm starting where y is negative 2. And I'm going 5 each way. So if I count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is 1, 3. Oh, shoot. 1, 2, 3, 4, it's way down here. That would be 1, negative 7. So my scale isn't very good, so my ellipse isn't too nice. But those four points are the vertices. So the next quiz you take, you're going to have a blank for the vertices. There's going to be four of them. So you have 1, 3, negative 3, negative 2, 1, negative 7, and 5, negative 2. Not grading the picture, not looking at the picture. Picture's not even required. But somehow you got to figure out what these are. So let's review that, make sure we got it. We got our center. Yep. This number tells me count sideways, 4. That number tells me count up and down, 5. Got it? And for the go to the right and left four, are you taking uh, dividing the, the, the square root of 16? This is like a radius. Okay. So you take the square root of it. Okay. And that tells you how far sideways to go. Right. Take the square root of that, tells you how far up and down to go. Right. Now, ellipses are ovals. So they have a major axis and a minor axis. That is, they have a long direction and a shorter direction. Which way did we go the longest? Y. The y direction. And in the y direction, we went up and down five. Yep. So the axis, <coughs> if you drew this line in right here, the axis would be 10 units long. Come on, that's not hard. You went up and down five. Mm -hmm. What about the other axis, the minor axis? That would be eight. That would be eight because you went sideways four. All right. So so far this is pretty easy. Now we have our foci. 
Isn't that the, the only other thing I asked you to find? The food side. There are two of them. I collect called foci, not focus. And they are always somewhere on the major axis. Now remember, I'm not grading your picture. So I'm not all, I'm not, I don't care where you put them, but they're somewhere on the major axis. Now, it's important for you to visualize that at least because you know that you're gonna go up and down for these foci. And I can tell you exactly what this red point is if I know how far I have to go up. So to find that distance from the center to the focus, to find this red arrow right here, that distance right there. Anybody remember what we do from yesterday? It's a square root and it's 25 minus 16. So we subtract our denominators and take the square root. Subtract your denominators and take the square root. So big denominator minus little denominator. We don't want any negatives. So it's 25 minus 16. Well, 25 minus 16 is nine. And the square root of nine is three. So that means you're going to start right here, this point right here, and you're going to go up three. <coughs> so if you start here and you go up three, where are you going to be? One, one. And then to get the other one, you're simply going to go down three. Where will you be if you go straight down three from one the center? Five. One negative five. And those are your foci. One, one and one negative five. What? When you do the square root, you always get a bigger number. Yeah, otherwise you'll get eyes. We don't want eyes. It's always the big one minus the little one. Okay. Ready for the next one? Sure, I love that attitude. Yes, let's go, here we go. Okay, so take a look at your equation and see if you can figure out where the center is because that is very, very important. What did you say? Yep, if you said negative three, zero, you are right. I want everybody to look at that equation. Everybody see negative three, zero? Mm -hmm. So everything starts right here. That's the beginning of everything. You're gonna be counting, that's where you're counting from, that point. Right, so now I need my vertices, and there are four of them. Your book will say there's only two if you're doing the homework problems. There are four. I want you to put all four. All right, so what do we do? We find our vertices. We look at these denominators. What does that nine tell me? Three. Three sideways, right and left three. So if I start here and go right three, I'll be at the origin. And if I go left three, negative six, zero. So two of my vertices are negative six, zero and zero, zero. Are you keeping up? It's not hard, we're counting. Now, what does that 16 tell me right here? This 16, what does that tell me? Up and down four. Kids, you know that's the up and down number because it's under the Y. The Y is the up and down. So we're gonna go up and down four from the center. So one, two, three, four. Where will I be if I go straight up four? Negative three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Negative three, negative four. So those are my other two vertices. 
connect those. Remember, nobody's grading your graph. You don't even have to do one if you don't want to. Okay, so how long is my major axis? Eight. eight. Everybody good with that? Everybody know how we got eight? Peyton, you know how we got eight? With a major axis? We count it up and down. Four. So what's my minor axis, Ken? Six. Six, because we counted sideways. Three. Now, somewhere in there are my focus points my foci, and they're always on the major axis, always. So again, they're gonna be on this one, right? That's the major one. They're somewhere on there. I'm just gonna put them on there. There are my focus points, those big green points. And you can figure those out if you know how far up to go. Look at our equation. And the center of the focus is going to be the square root of 16 minus 9. 16 minus 9. Oh, shoot. That's not a whole number. Don't worry. It's fine. We're going to start here. And we're going to go straight up root 7. So where are you going to be? Negative three, seven. Negative three, comma, root seven. That's exactly right. If you start at zero and you go up root seven, aren't you at root seven? Oh. Think about it. If you started at zero and went up two. Wait, what up? Why is it negative? Oh, it's not negative. That's why is it? That middle thing was. Okay, think about it like this. If you're still struggling with the root seven, you gotta get over it. Not all numbers are integers. But if I was going up two from this point, wouldn't I be at negative three comma two? And if I were going up 12, I would be at negative three comma 12. So if I'm going up root seven, I'm at ne negative three comma root seven. It just is what it is, okay? Now, what if I go down root seven? Negative three, negative root seven. And those are my focus points. So let's say you were at two, then it would be two plus root seven and two minus root seven. It's your starting point plus that distance and your starting point minus that distance. So this one is technically zero plus root seven and zero minus root seven. So then if you had like, if you were at negative three, two, you would just put two plus. Yep, that's negative. exactly right. So negative three comma two plus root seven and that that's going to happen oh maybe not okay. yeah I, I thought it might happen in the next one but i don't think it is all right are we ready for one more yep. yes we can't wait i love your enthusiasm that's wonderful here we go I need you to be enthusiastic. Cody about killed me this morning and I'm, oh, I'm dead. So I need you to maintain the enthusiasm here. So we have x squared over 25 plus y minus 2 squared over 1 equal to 1. Now one thing I haven't talked about is, because the quiz we take on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever I see you again, the quiz we take is going to have three problems on it. 
Okay, it's gonna have the circle and the parabola that you just did, and then it's gonna have one of these. Are you gonna be able to tell that's an ellipse when it's there with the other equations? Are you gonna be able to tell? Yeah, because it's got the squares over numbers, right? As opposed to the circle, which has an x squared and a y squared, but they're not fractions, right? So this is your ellipse. Where's the center of this one? Zero two. Zero two. So everything is starting from that point. All your counting is going to be starting at zero two. All right, so let's see, let's find those vertices. This is a 25 under an X. So what does that tell me to do? Uh, go right back. Okay, so side to side five, right? So one, two, three, four, five. This is five, two. And one, two, three, four, five, which is negative five, two. So my first two vertices are five, two, negative five, two. Is everybody okay with that? All right, now where are the other two? So they're going straight up how much? One. So that puts me at zero, three. And down one, putting me at zero, one. Okay, thank goodness no one's grading my picture, right? axis is 10 units. Everybody good with that? That's not a point. That's a number. This means how long is it? It's 10 units long. Minor axis is 2. two. Now that picture is very strange looking for sure. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, I think we mentioned yesterday what if what if this number had also been a 25? Okay, so what shape would I have? A circle, because I'd be going sideways and up and down the same amount, right? So if this were a 24, I'm going sideways and up and down almost the same amount, right? So it's not really a circle, but it's close to a circle. Well, when I make this a one, there's a big difference between 25 and one, right? So it's not circle-like at all. You see that the bigger difference there is between these two numbers, the more stretched your ellipse is gonna be. If those numbers are close together, it's gonna be real circular. But this one obviously is not. Okay, foci, always on the major axis. So they're out here somewhere. I will know what they are if I know what this distance is. So I'm going to start at my center and I'm going to count that way. What is the distance from the center to the focus? 25 minus 1, which is 24, or 2 root 6. So start at your center point and add 2 root 6. Well, what is your center point? Zero? So zero plus two root six. That's going to be two root six comma two. And then how am I going to get that one? Zero, my starting point, zero minus two root six. So negative two root six comma two. And those are your first one. Now again, kids, you have problems in the book. You can practice your homework problem. You can redo these. Copy my another piece of paper and do them again. But you need to be able to do this.
Now we're going to switch ears a little bit. Look at number two. What is number two asking you to do? Write your own equation. Oh lordy. Now we're going to write our own equation. Okay, so write our own equation of an ellipse. Okay, so an ellipse looks like this. You are just getting used to this, and I understand that. But look back at all of our examples. Okay, time out. Just a second. Love your enthusiasm. Wait a second. Let me get make sure everybody's with me here. If you look at all the equations that we just did, don't you have x squared over something, y squared over something equal to 1? Yes. So that's the format. Now, Evan says... Looking at what they told me. Oh, yeah. Well, let's start with the center. So we have x plus 2 and y plus 4. Is everybody good on that? Now they tell me. Oh, this is a bad problem. I need to fix this. Does it matter where we put the divider and it, the it, You can't tell in this problem, no. can you? There's not enough information. So there's actually two possible answers to this because we don't know which direction is minor and which direction is major, right? So let's say this is the minor one. It's 25. So if the minor axis is 10 units long, Think about what that means. Doesn't that mean you're going forward and backwards five? Yeah. And if we're going forwards and backwards five, then this number would have to be a 25? Right, remember that number square rooted tells you how far to go. Now, if the major axis is 12, then we're going up and down six which means this number has to be a 36. Now, to Ferris's point, you could have put the 36 here and the 25 here. There is no way to know in this problem. It is not a good problem. I did not do a good job. Both of these would be possible answers. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. How would it be worded in order to? You'd have to have another piece of information. So you either have to know like where a focus was or it would have to say it's vertical or something like that. All right, well that wasn't too bad. All right, let's try the next one. Again, we're writing an ellipse. So I'm gonna set up my structure here. Okay, so that's my framework. I'm gonna draw this one because I've got some points. Negative two, two. 12, 2. Now, wait a second, guys. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. This is the given. So here's my ellipse. This is the major axis, and this, and this is the minor axis. This is like a puzzle. What do you think? Do you have any ideas? Look at this right here. This is where x is 5, right? So I know my picture is not very good, but would you agree that x is 5? And that y has to be 2? 
Now, if you're doing this on graph paper, that's going to be real obvious because everything's going to be lined up perfectly. But she's right. Where they cross is the center. So that means x minus 5, y minus 2. Right? Now, how about those denominators? Can we figure out? What the, this is all we need right here. Can we figure out what those might be? Yeah. How? So here's my center. How far is it to here? I'm going forward how much? Seven. So I'm going forward and backward seven. So under X has to be 49. Because I'm going forward and backward seven. Now how far up and down am I going? Six. Well, the total is six. But from the center, I'm going up three and down three, which means this number is a nine. That's fun. All right, we only have one more. And you guys have made it through. So here we go. We're going to write the equation of an ellipse. They tell me that the center is at 4, 1. Well, wait. I could stop right there and fill in some stuff. If the center is at 4, 1, x minus 4 minus 1. Yep. Now the vertices are at negative 1, 1 and 9, 1. one two, three. 9, 1, and 4, 4, and 4, negative 2. Those are the vertices. Remember, the vertices are the points you connect to make your oval. Five and nine. Somebody said sixteen. Let's go with six, six nine. What's nine? X is nine. X is nine. And then Y is twenty-five. What do we think about that? That doesn't bother anybody. Give me the heebie-jeebies, folks. That's not right. Wait, that's not right. No. Here's my center. How far did I go to get from here to here? What's that Five. distance right there? Five. Five. Which way is that? That's not Y. That's horizontal, right? So I went right and left five. Where does the right and left number go? Under X. This is the 25. Now I went up and down. So the up and down number goes under well, the y. Numbers right, right? The numbers were right. You're exactly right. So you get points for being having the right numbers. But you do not get full credit unless you have the right numbers in the right spots. Okay? All right. One more review problem. And then we'll be done for the day. I'll hand out your megaphones. Give you your hugs and you're off and running. About our Easter candy. Huh? Easter candy. Easter candy. Listen, if I had an Easter candy, I'd be eating it myself. Oh, I deserve it. Your email said Easter candy. Okay. Yeah, so here we go. You might have a volunteer <laughs> to come and do it um, at the board. I just don't want to do the same problem I've already done. I just going to be a little bit tough. Come on, you can do it, Shrek. I have confidence. Uh, we're finding the center, the vertices, the major, minor, and the uh, cosine.
So here we go. Everybody's working on this. We're going to check our work with So he went up, this was negative one comma two. He knew he had to go up two root five. So how we do that is, this is negative one comma, take your starting point, which is two, and add two root five. So two plus two root five. That's how he got his focus. This one will be negative one, to minus two root five. Very, very nicely done. Nicely done. Can I switch my hand off? Yep. And we do 